Welcome to chapel at Hardin-Simmons University. Here at HSU, we value the importance of gathering together as a community of faculty, staff, and students to worship God and encourage one another in our Christian walk. This weekly time together is an opportunity for us to grow as a community of worshipers as we study the Word of God, engage with dynamic speakers, and learn to do life together. No matter who we are or where we've come from, this is our time to learn, grow, serve, love, and worship. Welcome to chapel. We're so glad you're here. Come and stand and worship with us this morning. Let's worship our good God this morning. Come on. Suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one heart. And from north to south and east to west, we hear Christ be magnified.
a good God that we serve. Christ be magnified. Let that be true in our lives this morning. Let's read this passage from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. It says this, it says, What shall we say then? Are we, continue, are we to continue to live in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death also? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. This week is Holy Week. This is when we observe the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is probably the best week of our entire lives that we get to reflect on. This is the gospel that we get to reflect on, that Jesus Christ died for me, died for you, died for your sin, died for your shame, so that you could walk in newness of life. In verse 1 it says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. Guys, we shouldn't continue to live in sin. We shouldn't continue to walk in wrong. We should continue to walk in newness of life because Jesus Christ paid the price for us. We can identify with that. We can say, Christ be magnified in my life, and I want to identify as somebody who does not live as a slave to sin and shame anymore. If you have sin and shame this morning, man, you're just like me. <laughs> you're just like everybody else on the stage. But you can walk in newness of life as I have, as these people have. I encourage you to do that. Let's continue to worship Jesus Christ's name. He's worthy this morning. Let's sing. Jesus. 
for taking our place on the cross and paying the debt that we owed. Thank you for your unconditional love that defeats death and breaks chains of sin and shame. Because of you, we find freedom and redemption and new life. I pray that for the rest of our days, we will sing your praises to the world, letting them know that there is a Father in heaven who loves us so much that he sent his Son to take our place because we never could have done it on our own. Worthy is your name, Father, and may we remember that not only this week, but every day for the rest of our lives. We love you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's so nice to see every one of y'all here and thank you for joining us for worship. Right now, you can take a moment, turn around to your neighbor and ask them what they're going to be doing for Easter. Can you turn me up, guys? Thanks. Hi, everybody. We're so thankful you're here. How's everyone making it through this semester? Gonna make it? Y'all got tests coming up? Anybody? A few? Peace. Peace and grace as you study. How about our seniors? Where are y'all? Raise your hands. Raise your hands, guys. Man, y'all are close. Does it feel good to be close? We're excited for y'all. Thank you for your leadership on this campus. 
Man, we're just blessed. Just in worship this morning, I'm just reminded what a blessing we have at this university to get to be here and just take a minute, right, and breathe. Um, be with the Lord. It's a, it's a huge gift, and we're glad you're here. I'm going to introduce uh, a very dear friend of mine, but also um, someone that I know is going to bless us in our time this morning. I'm going to read a couple of things about her, and I'm going to tell you about her from my heart. So Suzanne Allman is a native Texan. Whoop, whoop. She retired from Abilene Christian University last May after a 30-year career there. She served in lots of administrative roles, uh, primarily in her last stretch as the president's chief of staff and many years as the director of human resources. Suzanne also implemented and led uh, a ministry called Still Point at ACU for eight years and uh, it's a ministry for faculty and staff designed to help them learn and experience the Christian disciplines of solitude, silence, and prayer. Something that a lot of us don't know a lot about, right? It's not our culture to really be still. And it's certainly not our culture to be um, silent, right? Anybody but me? Constant? Always? Um, lots of input uh, continually. She holds a Bachelor's of Business Administration degree from ACU and a Master's of Science degree in Gerontology from the University of North Texas, and she holds a Certificate in Spiritual Formation from the Transforming Center in Chicago. So we're in for a treat this morning, but I want to tell you something I was praying about, about when I was introducing, I wanted to introduce her. One of the things I would encourage you most, and I would encourage you freshmen all the way to juniors, Utilize this time in your life to have people that are speaking in and forming you at a heart level. And that's going to mean vulnerability and authenticity. Uh, but you have a lot of people here who want to do that for you. And then for you seniors, I want to encourage you, uh, as soon as you leave here and get settled in your jobs and in your churches, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to people who can speak into your life and your heart spiritually. Now, you're going to need wise counsel. God's going to continue to put you in places where he's going to grow you. And in those times, there's really stretching times, right? And I want you all to know that Suzanne is one of the people that God has put in my life that I go to for spiritual counsel. And those people are really important. And here's what I know about this woman. She seeks God daily. She's perpetually in his word, letting him transform her. And she gives wise counsel to many, many people in her church. And I happen to be one of the friends that God gifted. Um, he gifted her to me. Uh, for a lot of times of prayer for my marriage, for my children, uh, and for the calling God has on my life. So I'm going to pray a blessing on her, but I'm also going to pray a blessing on y'all that God gives you people who will war for you and who will encourage you and help keep you really connected to the Spirit um, as you walk in your life. So thank you, Suzanne, for being that for me. Lord, we thank you for this time, and I ask for your Spirit to come upon each one of us. This message is so important uh, that she's going to share, and it's very countercultural, God. So I pray that you would open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds, uh, and Holy Spirit, come and do a convincing work. That's really what I pray, a convincing work. Uh, as we listen to these things that are so countercultural, I pray your spirit would come on her. I pray she'd have a great peace and joy as she shares years of experience in this place. And God, I do pray for every person here that you would guide them to the people that you have that have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the truth. Lord, that will help them at specific times along the way to stay close to you and to be, um, just to be fed by you in just the right way at just the right time. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Thank you for that introduction, Shelley. Uh, it's a little scary when one of your closest friends is going to introduce you. Not real sure what they're going to say, but thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here with you today. Um, the Christian spiritual disciplines of solitude, silence, and prayer. Some of you may be thinking, okay, Suzanne, I, I get prayer, but solitude and silence? Are you kidding me? That would freak me out. What rock have you been living under? I mean, like, really? Like we could do that in our culture? Are you serious? And then on the other end of the continuum, some of you may be thinking, oh, man, that sounds great. I wish I could do that, but I, I'm too busy. I just I don't know how. So we're going to try to address a little bit of that today. Um, so what's the difference in solitude and silence? Kind of sounds like the same thing, huh? Solitude is temporarily pulling away from people and other distractions like this and spending time with God. You can be praying or just being quiet before God, reading scripture. Silence, on the other hand, I think is harder. It's silencing your mind as you spend time with God. No need to get hung up on the difference between those two. The point is spending time with God. Internationally known author and speaker Henry Nouwen says, the purpose of Christian spiritual disciplines is to create some space in which God can act, in which something can happen that you hadn't planned or counted on. Huh. We may not have thought about it that way before. Let's turn to scripture and look at the life of Jesus. Matthew 14, 23 after he had dismissed the multitudes, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Mark 1.35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke 4.42, at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. Luke 6.12, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. There are scriptures about silence a lot in the Old Testament, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah. Many great heroes of our faith practiced solitude and silence. Certainly Jesus did, but also Elijah and David and Moses and Mary and Paul, just to name a few. Now it reminds us that it's important to spend time with God because it's the place where you can listen to the voice of the one who calls you beloved daughter or beloved son. Other voices from Satan, our enemy, say, prove that you're loved. Prove, it. prove that you're worth something. My friends, you are worth a lot and you do not need to prove that you're um, loved or that you're worth something. God gave you that already. Author Dallas Willard says, silence is difficult because it makes us feel so helpless. We're so accustomed to relying upon words to manage and control others. If we're silent, who will take control? Well, God will, but we will never let him take control until we trust him. Silence is intimately related to trust. Well, we have a lot to say, don't we? According to the Pew Research Center, in December 2023, nearly one in five teenagers said they're on YouTube or TikTok almost constantly. Nearly half of teens say they use the internet almost constantly. Almost constantly is a lot. In June 2022, the Gallup organization noted the percentage of U.S. adults saying they use their smartphone too much has increased from 39% in 2015 to 58% in 2022. So how do we react to silence if we're at home, in a car, at church? You know, at church, in my church anyway, if it's silent for a little bit, we look around and go, whoa, somebody must have missed their cue. And I really affirm and admire churches that will say, you know what, we're going to take a little bit of time and be silent together. Author and speaker Dr. Ruth Haley Barton says, we are starved for mystery. To know this God and to experience reverence in his presence 
We are starved for intimacy to see and feel and know God in the very cells of our being. We are starved for rest, to know God beyond what we can do for him. We really don't know how to be very well. We know a lot about how to do. She says we are starved for quiet, to hear the sound of sheer silence. That's the presence of God himself. Does that ring true for you? It certainly does for me. We'll talk more about prayer in a moment, but what do you think Jesus was doing when he prayed all night long? Do you think he was just going over a litany of requests and talking and talking and talking and telling God all these things? Well, I don't know about you, but I could probably go through those things, and and those things are important. Intercessory prayer for others is very important, but I could probably do that in like an hour. I think Jesus was spending time with God in silence and solitude. Author Adele Calhoun says, silence is a time to rest in God. Lean into God, trusting that being with him in silence will loosen your rootedness in this world and plant you by streams of living water. It can form your life, even if it doesn't solve all the problems of your life. Okay, so that's great, Suzanne, but practically, how do we do this? So I'm going to give you a few tips, and then we're going to practice here in just a few minutes at the end of chapel. Well, Barton says, be intentional. She says, we think that somehow we're just going to fall into spiritual transformation by accident. We won't. Going to church, being in life groups, being in prayer groups, being in Bible class, all those things are important. Reading your Bible, all of those things are very important. But we need to set a little bit of time aside, I would argue, every day to be with God. Create that space and time just like on your calendar like you would with class or a work schedule. And for you, for some of you, I get, I get you're busy. I lived in a very, very busy world for a long time. When you're in the shower, that may be the only time you have all day, but that is a few moments when you could potentially be silent and just listen to what God might be saying to you. I would say begin with a reasonable goal. Don't say, well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be quiet and in solitude and silence for an hour every day. No, you won't. <laughs> I would say start with five minutes, especially if you've never done this before. And you may say, ah, five minutes. What could happen then? If you do that daily, every day, or even a few days a week, I promise you that will form you over the long haul. Um, you know, if you, if you start with five minutes, Four and a half of that, may, you may be having all these random thoughts through your head like, oh man, I've got, that, I've got that test today in history, I'm not ready, or wow, I'm hungry, what's for lunch? Or I'm so worried about my friend. That's okay. Think of yourself on the seashore, and those thoughts that are going through are just the ship, just going through, just let them go through, and then just come back and center yourself. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> Have compassion with yourself. Don't say, well, I should have, I could have. Just start right now from today. So then as you you sit down, you set your goal, be aware of your breathing, just your normal pattern of breathing. Take a few deep breaths to center yourself. You could pray a simple prayer like, Jesus, I trust you. God, I need you. Be willing to try, practice, and try again. It's okay if you get bored or if you feel like you showed up and God didn't. Think about great musicians or athletes. They have the discipline of practicing over and over and over. God is so honored with any bit of time that we bring him. He longs to be with us and he is so pleased when we do that. Solitude and silence set the stage or they're kind of the crucible for me to pray. They're not magic. They're not something else to add to your to-do list. They are a posture of worship. So as we move on to prayer, I want you to remember, if you don't remember anything else from this morning, pray as you can, not as you think you should. There's no one way to pray. There's no one way to do solitude and silence. Pray as you can, not as you think you should. 
Michaela Anderson, MD, writes this. God hears. He hears our fancy, formal, memorized prayers. He hears our bitter, angry prayers. Why, God? How? What am I supposed to do now, God? He hears our tiny, whispered, please, every single word. Please, help, be near, or even God. He hears through our anger, or disbelief, or pain, or sadness, or joy. He understands our feelings and our pain. He hears our hearts patter and thump and soar or ache. He hears our love and gratitude. Thank you, God. He hears the silent tears slipping down our cheeks. He hears even when we don't know what to say or how exactly we're supposed to pray. He hears. He already knows, and really, it doesn't matter the words, only that we turn to him through it all, in the middle of it all, again and again and again. God hears and he never leaves us alone. There are many ways to pray and I could talk all day long, but you've got other things to do and I do too. So we're just going to talk about two this morning, praying scripture and breath prayers. When I need help expressing my words, I can pray scripture. Why? Well, author Lance Witt gives us several reasons. One, it keeps our prayer life from becoming mechanical and routine. I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes I just sort of pray the same thing and I don't ever really get anywhere with that. And Well, if we're praying the word, it, it gives us new words to pray. Second, it helps our spiritual amnesia. I love going to the Psalms because David often was mad. He was mad, he was hurt, he was running, he was fearful. Other times he's joyous and he writes the most beautiful poetic prayers. But if David, a man after God's own heart, could speak like that in anger to God, then that gives me license and I know I can do that too. Praying scripture can help the Bible come alive. The writer of the New Testament book of Hebrews says in chapter 4, verse 12, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. There's something in the word for us every time we go. We may not realize it right at that time. It may be later when we're driving across town or when we're in a conversation with a friend or wherever. We're like, huh, I just read that today and I've read it a million times. Praying scripture can help you to hide God's word in your heart and allows you to know and claim some of the great promises of the Bible. The Bible is God's love letter to you. Okay, let that sink in for a moment. It's a revelation of himself, this author continues, and his plans and purposes. purposes. The scripture is central to our understanding of God and intimacy with God. It delights the heart of the Father when we read his word, sing his word, pray his word. In fact, he notes that many passages in the Bible are recorded prayers, as I mentioned, the best love being the Psalms. So I encourage you to, to start there, especially if you're struggling to know how to pray. And remember, pray as you can, not as you should. Another way to pray is with breath prayers. Our brothers and sisters since the fourth century have uttered these types of prayers. A short prayer phrase of typically seven to eight syllables, although sometimes it can be a little longer, in which you breathe in during the first part of the prayer and breathe out during the second. The Lord is my shepherd. Jesus, I trust you. God, help me. These can be spoken or uttered silently in times of joy, pain, confusion, or a number of other emotions. They can become a rhythm in your day that helps you stay focused on God continually. In other words, praying without ceasing. It's my understanding that in Hebrew, the word breath is the same as spirit. Think about that. We have the spirit of God living inside of us, his breath. Our author Macrina Vitacare writes, We can ache for God tremendously, yet find ourselves getting nervous if he gets too close. Am I too busy with my own agenda 
to let God's agenda bless me? Why shouldn't our experiences be filled with God? Who do we think it is who's breathing in us? Where do we think this ache has come from? And has it ever crossed your mind that God, too, has a fierce ache for you? There are literally hundreds of breath prayers in Scripture. You may decide to land on one as your breath prayer for a day, a week, a year. It can be prayed while you're waiting in line somewhere, stuck in traffic, or just walking across campus. Elizabeth O'Connor said in her book, Journey Inward, Journey Outward, that spiritual formation requires both of these journeys. The journey inward is a journey to find the Christ dwelling within us. The journey outward is the journey to find the Christ dwelling among us and in the world. The journey inward calls for the disciplines of solitude, silence, prayer, and attentiveness to the movement of other people's hearts. These two journeys belong together to strengthen each other. So we move from solitude, as Jesus did, to community, as Jesus did with his disciples, to ministry, as Jesus did in preaching and healing. Okay, for our last few minutes, and I am aware of the time, I invite you to put away whatever you have in your lap, uh, sit up straight so that you can be alert to the God of the universe. Then I invite you to close your eyes. No, I'm not going to make you do anything weird. Just trying to help us center a little bit. Notice your regular breathing. The very breath of God in you. Your breathing means that God has purpose for you today. Now take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Do that slowly. Do it two or three times. You could breathe in the breath of God, breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the breath of God, breathe out fear. I'm going to word a short prayer from Ted Loader, and then we're going to sit in silence for a very brief time. Remember, it's okay to have random thoughts go through. Just come back and say, Jesus, I trust you, or whatever centers you. And I'll close our time of silence in prayer. Oh, Holy One, we hear and say so many words, yet yours is the word we need. Speak now and help us listen. And if what we hear is silence, let it quiet us, let it disturb us, let it touch our need, let it break our pride, let it shrink our certainties, let it enlarge our wonder. This is a blessing for you from Susie Larson. May God's opinion matter far more to you than man's opinion. May his dreams for you speak louder than your fears. May you refuse to read into situations that make you anxious. May you instead be proactive with your perspective. Guard your heart, renew your mind, and fan the flame within you. Every single day, take time to rest, let yourself laugh, and go out of your way to love someone in your path. May you be courageous in your convictions, clear in your purpose, and kind in all of your conversations. 
Refuse to borrow tomorrow's troubles on today's strength. God's grace is available for you in this present moment. So stay present with God and your people. Don't let your mind wander into fears that God has not called you to face yet. May Jesus promise to be with you in every single moment be enough for you. This is where your faith counts. Hope you guys have a blessed day. You're dismissed. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for.